morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is allowing. We think of allowing as if it's a passive experience um, where in fact it can be a very active and deliberate determined choice and a choice that we keep making again and again and again. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic, an interesting uh, thing to explore. And I look forward to our conversation today. So uh, before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together. Vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the motion, the pressure, the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now into this remarkable physical form that enables us to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Rosalind. Good morning, Robin. How wonderful to start the day with you and with everybody else who's joining us. Today, we're talking about allowing. And um, it occurs to me that we may think of allowing as a, a passive kind of experience, you know, just sit back and allow. And, and we get to talk about what allowing actually is. It's kind of like letting, be, allowing that things are as they are. It doesn't mean doing nothing. It doesn't mean not um, taking action about certain things. It, uh, you know, it, what it means is allowing for what's so, like letting the reality be the reality, being aware, like not denying it, not pretending that it's something else. And then allowing is like releasing our resistance to what's so, you know, our, our, our desire to um, fight it, to resist it. Because we were talking yesterday about the framework that allows us to move beyond the polarities of right and wrong or or black and white and um, yin and yang and essentially to move beyond that polarity. In order to do that, we need to be able to kind of hold contradictions and to be in a place of allowing those contradictions to coexist in order that we can generate the energy to move to another level. Um, it, it can take a deliberate, active choice, decision to just let go of the resistance around it to let go that it's so uncomfortable to hold these polarities to hold the the situation um and allow it to unfold as it's going to unfold let's say we have an uncomfortable situation um we take the action we can take and then 
oftentimes, I don't know about you, but I find myself really wanting to push the river. Like this isn't happening fast enough. I need to do something more. I need to make this happen. Um, I need to force something rather than, okay, I've I've done what I can do and now I can allow it to unfold, which means releasing the attachment releasing the in the um inclination to keep churning over something to to just sort of do what needs to be done and then let it be what happens for so many of us is that we just get really wrapped up in thinking about it whatever it is it is thinking about it and um and chewing on it and worrying about it and putting all kinds of energy into it that is is feeding a fire and feeding a frenzy but not necessarily feeding us and not necessarily feeding an outcome that we desire so this conversation is coming about as a result of a situation. Um, Robin says overthinking. Yeah, well, a lot of a lot of our thinking is overthinking. Like, what's the function of it? What's it actually accomplishing? Right. A lot of our thinking is accomplishing thinking ourselves into a tizzy. You know, thinking ourselves into a state that is a state of upset, a state of, of unease and, and um, anything but a state of peace and calm and centeredness, right? It takes, we, we think ourselves into this very frenetic, uh, frantic, reactionary kind of state. And so, uh, this is coming about as a result of a situation that I am not happy with, that I have been uh, dealing with since December. And it's been, when I allow myself, like my initial reaction is this is just ridiculously infuriating and frustrating and unjust and all kinds of things like that. And I can make up all those stories. And what I'm very aware of is that it's up to me to manage my state. And am I going to, well, hello, Isabel. Oh my gosh, it's been forever. Welcome. So good to have you here joining us. Uh, we're talking about allowing and how it's actually an active practice. So um, what what I have been noticing is that in this circumstance that in the past, I would have been just obsessing about. And I have, even in this circumstance earlier, when it first started emerging, I was livid, just completely out of control of myself, you know, that I was just completely in reaction and it threw me into a tailspin. I threw me into a tailspin around it. And I really want to make that distinction for you to hear. I threw me into a tailspin. It wasn't the circumstance. The circumstance is just the circumstance. How I threw me into a tailspin is I made all these stories about it, about how it, the circumstance was unjust, unfair, um, lacking integrity, frustrating. I felt unheard. I had all these stories about it. And the situation is the situation. And I had all these reactions. It I, I, it w served as such a trigger for me that, that I went into this whole thing about it. And 
it's very easy, like faced with this thing that's still ongoing, that's still unresolved, that's still an indicator of tremendous lack of communication um, and, and what looks to me like a tremendous lack of integrity. Um, still, I notice that I have the choice. This is the allowing because how I worked myself into a tizzy around the whole thing and a, and a big one was by not allowing, by saying this, it shouldn't be this way. It shouldn't be this way instead of it is how it is. You know, like railing against gravity, essentially. You know, this is how it is. These are the circumstances of the moment. And what I get to choose, where I get to assert my sovereignty, where I get to assert my, my will, my intention, my values, uh, where I get to um, participate in this in a way that is empowered rather than victimized is to manage my state. And in order to do that, I get to be allowing things to be as they are, to unfold in the way that they do, and to not believe, not to project how that unfolding is going to happen. Because the truth is, I really don't know what's going to happen out of this. I don't know how it's going to resolve. I do know that it's going to resolve one way or another and that I will have choices to contend with. Um, and I have choices along the way. And what, what we each have the opportunity to do when confronted with these situations that are unjust, unfair, inexplicable, frustrating, et cetera, is to allow for them to be and, and not let them dictate to us, let the circumstances dictate to us how we are going to feel. We get to choose. So this allowing piece is me in my circumstance is me consciously and deliberately bringing myself back and it takes conscious and determined effort I can tell you in the face of my mind wanting to run away with some of these things um, and the stories and the outrage and you know like part of me really wants to run away like a wild horse with all of that and to just step back and allow for things to unfold as they're going to unfold, to, to be able to stay in a centered place, to be able to respond rather than react, to be able to have sovereignty over my state of being. This is where our power resides. This is where our sovereignty resides is in stewarding and curating our story about what is going on in life in such a way that we are able Maybe we, we let go of the stories and we just look at what's so, but also to, to be curating our story and our, our interaction with these kinds of circumstances that are, that are triggering for us such that we maintain 
our wholeness and our centeredness so that we take care of ourselves so that we can really be present and that's that's the allowing that I'm talking about, that it takes remembering, coming back to, this is what's happening, this is what's happening. You know, just allowing that what is there is there without all the overlays and all the reactivity and all the, in, um, the um, interpretation. Because so much of that comes from reactivity, from a lens of our history and our wounds. And that colors the way we're seeing a situation and it limits the way we see a situation. So the allowing is allowing that to fall away. Allowing all of that to fall away so that we can find ourselves again. So that we can be centered and present and responsive. So Robin says, I... I to have done this and still do, although looking at it from a different perspective, it, if it is free will of the source or sources, I pray for them to find a better outcome for the highest good of all involved. Well, I think, I think that that's the intention for sure. I mean, I, I choose to operate through the hypothesis. It's a, it's a hypothesis because I don't know its fact, but I operate as though it is that life is happening for me and through me rather than to me. That I'm an expression of life, a unique expression of life expressing itself through this unique vessel. And if life is happening for me, then there's nothing for me to fight against. I can take action against it. You know, I can take action in the face of injustice. Something is calling for action. But on, an, on an, another level, nothing's wrong. What if it's unfolding exactly in perfection? And it is about looking at it from a different perspective, for sure. The, the way that we can exercise our, our free will is through choice. And there's freedom in letting all of this stuff, all of these interpretations, letting the lens fall away. The lens of bias that's saying, you know, they're out to get me, for instance, or, you know, this kind of thing always happens or whatever our stories are, you know, that, that, um, that it's unfair. This is a, this is a really interesting thing to think about too, is we often, experience things in life that are unfair and we might rail against it it's not fair it's not fair well the the truth is where did the or or the question is really where did the notion that life is fair come from like where where did this notion of fairness even come from you know who said things are fair and how do we determine what's fair and what's not fair? So when the, the, um, the conversation below the conversation of it's not fair is that it should be different. And I know better how it should be, right? I know that things shouldn't be this way. And again, that's resisting what is. And maybe, you know, it's like once we recognize that this is how things are, then maybe we can act to, to move it into something else, you know, to change it. But the, the angst about that change, it's not that we don't get to act to change things or transform things or allow things to emerge into something new. That's not the case. It's that 
the it's not fair conversation is kind of the is kind of a um well it's limited it's a limited conversation right because we can be looking at what what if, if something seems unjust it's one thing to recognize you know what it could be better things could be better served in this way or another way the emotion that comes around that injustice the emotion that emerges that fury that sense of victimization that sense of powerlessness and helplessness i think that's an illusion i think what we get to do in recognizing this is how things are without making the meaning that they should be you know like that there's this emotional injustice about it although i feel that and i have felt that you know like we get to we get to stand back and say oh okay so let's look at the bigger picture what's going on here what's allowing this where what's an acupuncture point that can perhaps shift this and we get to curate our state and our story along the way because until we recognize that things are the way they are and i keep saying this but i'm trying to like kind of get under the surface here as i'm thinking this through with you um We can look at an injustice and we've talked about problems and how problems are whack-a-mole kind of thing because you knock out one and another one pops up. So if we look at injustice, um, the, the inclination is to look at that isolated thing rather than as part of a bigger system where there's something else operating that's holding that thing in place. And as long as we're in resistance to or or stuck on, you know, this is not fair, it's not fair, or or whatever the outrage is, we're we're narrowing our focus onto that one thing instead of stepping back and looking at the big picture and saying, hey, what's going on here? What's allowing this thing to be in place? What are the other elements that are part of this? And um when we stand back and recognize and allow things to be as they are, um, then we can have a larger view. Because when we're in that state of alert and upset, literally our vision narrows. Literally, we become we become tied up in a cycle, like a repetitious record playing over and over and over and over, saying the same thing, but it's it's not it's not going it, to it's not it's just going to create more opposition and what we get to do is stand back as we allow actively allow like letting go of all that attachment all that story to be able to say okay so what's really going on what what are the dynamics here what might be available for me to see that I wasn't seeing otherwise as I step back, as I allow that this is what's so. Now what? Now what? It's like you can't get from here to there without knowing where here is. And that's what the allowing is, is allowing that this is what's so. And maybe part of what's so is I'm freaking out and I'm reactive and I'm not seeing clearly and I'm in my stuff and then I get to get out of that. And that's that then is like, oh, okay. Oh, I, I can't tell you how many opportunities 
I've had in this in this circumstation. I'm sorry, in this circumstation is a new word. Circumstance, situation, circumstation. Um, I can't tell you how many opportunities I've had. Rosalind chimes in, wait, what am I thinking? Exactly, exactly. Stop. What's going on here? What am I projecting? What am I creating? What's actually what's actually happening here? So Rosalind says, go outside, absorb rays of source that's walk that's always there. Unplug for a moment. That's a really good thing to do too. It's a really good thing. And breathe and uh, allow yourself to come back to yourself, to come back to center. Because we often, you know, like we go off on these, you know, diving down the rabbit hole of our fury, of our frustration, of our w upset, whatever it is. And allowing is maybe allowing that we have that upset, recognizing it, but really allowing for what's so. To get beyond our projections it's to see the water that we're swimming in you know to step back out of the fishbowl and see oh there i am in that fishbowl there's that water like i i i can get i can see the water and when i see the water then i have the opportunity to be allowing i can allow oh there's water oh there part of me there's a fish kind of thing so that's it for today the invitation is to allow what is to be that we may then be able to respond rather than react and that we maintain our centeredness, our wholeness in whatever these circumstances may be. So I'm Mira Rubin. This is the Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel and my Facebook page. And I invite you to please like and follow both the Enlightened World Network and my YouTube channels. The links are in the description. Um, hi, Dido. So glad you could join us today. And as always, I'm so deeply grateful to every one of you for the opportunity to share our morning musings and explorations of life. And so much love to you. Until next time.